Hey guys, welcome to the chef's pantry. What's cooking? Okay, this is my favorite time of year to get in the kitchen. I love cusp seasons where you have like those lazy tomatoes still coming off the vine and those early root vegetables going in the garden. It is so fun to be a foodie celebrating right now. Um, what have you guys been cooking? We've had a blast the last couple of weeks in the chef's pantry. A couple of weeks ago, we cooked with Woods Hill executive chef, Charlie Foster. He sent me to the Beverly airport to forage for some sumac. We made baba ganoush with eggplant. Last week, uh, the mayor of Gloucester held down the fort with an awesome tomato pasta sauce. Well, I took the week off and went clamming down on the Cape. Um, I love to forage. And then this week, we're in for a treat. We are with Saba Wahid. She is beautiful. She is talented. She's an incredible teacher and chef. She's a movie star. Look at her. That's on set in Dubai, where she was co-host of an incredible cooking show. She worked on Studio One, and now she's back in the States bringing her globally inspired flavor profile to us. And she is an incredible resource when it really comes to anything in the kitchen, from appliances to incredible recipes. We're really lucky to have her. And let's go to her live now. Hi, Saba. Hi, Anna. It's good to see you. Your setup in you looks so beautiful. Tell us where you are. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, I am cooking here in the Yale Appliance Framingham showroom. This is one of my absolute favorite kitchens to cook in. It's gorgeous. The cooktop is awesome. And I get to cook right in front of you, which is incredible. I know. This is the next best thing. I miss being side by side. We had a blast now almost two years ago cooking up some tasty Super Bowl treats, some delicious holiday souffles. I'm still thinking about the gingerbread eggnog that you whipped up from scratch. You blow me away. You're so talented. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know it seems like uh, it was ages ago and so much has happened since those cooking segments. I can't Including a baby. Congratulations. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, my world has just been flipped turned upside down, but in the best way possible. Um, she just, you know, lights up my life. And I, I I can't believe I'm a mom still, like nine months later, I have this precious little gift that I get to go home to. And it's just, it is amazing. It really is. Well, motherhood suits you. And it must be fun now that she's probably starting to eat some solid foods. Oh, this is the, this is what I've been waiting for. I feel like my whole life to make food for my baby. I love it. She's eating salmon and eggs and sweet potatoes, and you know we're trying to get her into um, some pasta and other starches. But she uses her little fingers and <laughs> puts it in her mouth. Oh, it's the cutest thing ever. I just I love cooking for her. This is like my my moment to shine, I feel. Forget the Dubai stuff, forget all the culinary stuff. <laughs> Cooking for my baby is what I've been waiting for my whole life. But I will, I'm sure you'll come up with some great tips and tricks for moms to be when, when you put her to the test, get her critique on dishes. Absolutely. So I, I'm so impressed. You look so poised. And I, I definitely wasn't as put together as you were when mine were nine months old. But I'm super excited about the dish that you proposed. Tell us what we're making. Oh, so we are making a shakshuka. Um, not only is it a delicious dish, it's just a fun word to say. It's <laughs> very mysterious. I feel like a lot of people don't know the roots of the dish. Um, so it has Middle Eastern origins, but it spans across North Africa, Israel, um, Middle East, Mediterranean. Everybody kind of puts their own spin on it. So essentially today we're doing a stewed tomato version, mm. um, spices and flavors, and then we're baking eggs right into it. And uh, we're going to top it with some feta and you can enjoy it with um, some toasted bread. And essentially it's gluten free. So you could put it over some polenta if you wanted to. Great for breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner, whatever you like. Yeah, I like those silly suppers that kind of walk across day part really well. How many of you guys know what shakshuka is? It has almost a quarter million, over a quarter million hashtags on Instagram. It's like, it's really a cool dish. That's how I learned about it. One of the coffee shops had like, hashtag shakshuka, get on the, get on the, 
party wagon. So for this dish, you've put together your own spin on flavor profile. It seems like it really speaks to your global inspiration with what you bring to the plate. Should we get started and then we'll talk about the flavors as we build it? Absolutely, absolutely. So traditionally, um, this dish doesn't really have meat in it, but I liked the addition of uh, the cured meat. So I originally did it with beef bacon. Uh, today, I am using duck bacon, which I rendered off already. But um, you can put it in, you can leave it out, whatever suits your personal taste. So today we're doing um, duck bacon. I already rendered the fat. so. We have Ooh. the crispy duck bacon here, and we have the fat in the pan. So I'm just going to add a little Ooh, bit nice. of olive oil to that, and then um, sweat down some onions. Oh, um, tell me about that really cool pan. Oh yeah. So this pan, you notice how beautiful this lavender color is. I tried to match my chef coat today too. <laughs> I like to coordinate in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so this pan, it's called the Always Pan by our place. It's an eight in one nonstick pan. You can make eggs in it, you can sear in it, you can steam in it. It has a steamer basket as well. And um, yeah, you can braise in it. It's pretty awesome. Um, you can't put it in the oven, uh, but it's a cast aluminum, so it can really hold up to high temperatures and it conducts heat really quickly too. Mm, I like that low profile. I find that even with this one, it's about three inches. It's like this size is one that's so versatile for like a a pan fry or a steam, it gets a lot of action in the kitchen. Absolutely, yeah, no, I love the low profile. I love the lid too. The lid, it actually has um, this design which disperses the condensation evenly across the top. So you don't get like soggy spots or too much moisture building up inside. It's pretty cool. They really thought of everything. Oh, I like it. And the nonstick is so great, getting a really good quality surface. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're cooking with anything nonstick, I definitely recommend using either a silicone spatula or a wooden spoon. Um, anything metal is really gonna scrape that sort of coating off. So you wanna handle with care. So definitely um, a spoon. This spoon actually comes with this pan and check that out. It's a built-in spoon rest. Oh, I like that. Isn't really that cool? Nice. <laughs> so no mess. It's awesome. So you don't have to, um, you know, get a spoon rest to put on your countertop or mess up your your stove top. Less cleanup. I'm always a big fan of less cleanup. <laughs> yes, exactly. It makes the after far more enjoyable. So we have the onions, the garlic, the peppers on a low simmer here, and then tell us the spice are going into this shakshuka. Yes, so I actually, um, this is my personal favorite spice blend that I'm using. Um, a little bit of toasted cumin. This is mm. a sweet smoked paprika. And I use crushed red chili flakes because I like a little bit of heat. Um, you can definitely make this um, your own. You can use your own blend of spices. You can add more chili if you like it spicier. Uh, but this is the part where you can also uh, make your own variation. Definitely customize it to your, your personal taste. But this is my particular um, favorite because that, that smoky pimenton just gives it so much depth. And you know me, I love heat. So those chili flakes definitely um, do the trick there. And cumin, I feel like just adds so much depth of flavor in everything. So. Wait, I feel like cumin is like a plane ticket. When I get that flavor note, I feel like I'm already on the the trip to being, you know, transported somewhere really great. And I've been using the pimenton a lot. Um, I like that it has um, a little bit of heat, but you get depth too. So there's really a lot of flavor that you're putting into the dish like this. Oh yeah, pimenton is extremely versatile too, Anna, because you can just keep it in um, your pantry. You can put it in your just your omelets, eggs. Um, you can make a really nice aioli out of it too. Ooh. You could, um, oh my goodness, uh, shrimp pair really beautifully with it. So it's so versatile. You can use it in everything. And then you just gave it a little crack of some salt and conventional pepper. Did I see you put in there? Yeah, I. you know, I always like to, 
layer and salt brings out the natural flavor of the food. So I don't like salting just at the end. I like to salt at the different stages because it does bring out the natural flavor of each ingredient that you're cooking. So I always add a little bit of salt and pepper every time I add an ingredient just to make sure everything kind of comes together at the end. Great. All right. Um, I love how the pepper is giving everything that beautiful sort of pinkish salmon hue. Oh, it's God, this dish is conversational beautiful. pepper. Yeah, it's so pretty. And actually, if you wanted to put like different colored peppers in there, you could do that too. You could put in yellow, orange, green, you could put a whole medley. And actually, you know, there's a variation of shakshuka, which is called the green shakshuka. So you can omit the tomato completely and use like, spinach and Swiss chard leaves and, and do a whole green profile in there too. So the variations are endless. That's really fun. I like, this is my favorite type of recipe where you sort of have the framework and then you can use what looks good, what, what suits your style, what's fresh and seasonal. It's, it's a, the recipe for success. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about. Okay. So are we going to add the tomato at this point or what do you say? I think we, yeah, we can go ahead because we've sweated down the garlic, the onions, the peppers. They look pretty good to me. Um, and now I want the flavors to uh, meld with our tomato. I'm using a San Marzano tomato today. Great. Me too. The queen of tomatoes in this house. Absolutely. Um, people always ask, you know, why would you spend the extra money because for a canned tomato, I think it costs like double the price, $3 a can versus like the dollar or dollar fifty for a regular can of tomatoes. The San Marzano have a much richer flavor profile. Absolutely. You can't mm. that flavor. Um, so no matter what I'm making, if it's a shukshuka or um, just a standard tomato sauce, I would definitely recommend this particular kind of tomato for for everything. You just get so much more flavor out of it. Do you have a favorite brand of San Marzano? That's a good question. Um, I, when I can, there's the, I'm gonna butcher the name, but Muir Glen. Okay. Yeah, that one, I, I've used that many times and that one has been wonderful, very balanced. Sometimes, you know, even with canned tomatoes, you can get a little bit of that can taste, but those sure. have been fantastic. So I do recommend um, those, but um, honestly, uh, anyone you can find in the supermarket will work. The, uh, with the last name, like Rossi, the San Marzano tomatoes have been a quarantine staple. So oh. every time I go out, I just put a couple extra on the shelf. Absolutely. Anytime I go to the supermarket, I'll <laughs> grab like two cans, just keep them in the pantry. You never know when you're going to need them because, <laughs> right? yeah, you can make like a quick marinara sauce or you can make a quick, um, it'll just add depth of flavor to anything really. So, okay. Yeah. Just give it a little extra pinch of salt since we added the tomato. Yes. I'm going to give it a little taste. Perfect. Perfect. 